side of the map, it put it so heavily in NA's favor that he yeah. just could not keep up. But you cannot forget his opponent also in the jungle in this one, Kasa. He was going off yesterday on that Lee Sin. He was keeping his team in the early game. He was setting up Maple as well on that Cat Arena. So if he goes off this game, he could maybe carry this game. For and them. you mentioned two champions. We feel like NALCS have to target the Lee Sin and the Cat Arena, or at least have to be a thought in the draft. They do, but you know, do they have to ban yeah. the, the Cat Arena? I don't know because Bjergsen can play Cat Arena, right? This is this is a guy who plays assassins, and when I found out I'm casting this matchup, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Maple and Bjergsen both are assassin players. We've been seeing them get so many bans, but well, okay, there it goes. <laughs> Interestingly, though, this comes out. My, my dreams are dead. LMS. It's the LMS that are targeting this, perhaps yeah. looking at a different mid laner here, because if we do see this, the likes of a LeBlanc and a Rise are still available here. I would anticipate them to be the last two bans out, but that's a lot of mid lane focus. Yeah, it, it certainly is. And I mean, Bjergsen got triple banned yesterday. It's kind of the, the Bjergsen special. He gets a lot of focus, <laughs> both in champ select and in game. Uh, but they're going to take Twitch off the table because of how well Doublelift did. And yeah. And it's just a really strong champion. But I mean, yesterday Doublelift was what fourteen and one or something. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. Also in the one v ones as well. So not everyone seems to know exactly how one v one works. Not so hot well. though. <laughs> yeah, but people like standing in the poison. People don't understand how it's working now in the new patch. And now NA get forced into a tough spot. It's either Rise or LeBlanc because Cassiopeia is taken off the table. The thing is, you don't have to ban either. You, if you're okay playing both sides of the matchup, you can ban something else. Leave two OPs open, say, okay, sure, you first pick Rise, I take LeBlanc. You first pick LeBlanc, I take Rise. And and now it's kind of crunch time. How confident is Bjergsen playing both sides of the matchup? Because if you ban away one, likely the other goes over to Maple, but you can leave two OPs open and just trade. And that's, that's exactly, exactly what, they're what they're gonna, gonna do. do. The Zyra as the final ban here, man. I can't wait to see a LeBlanc. And I mean, there's pretty much a 100% chance we're gonna see it now. <laughs> oh, baby, there it is. The insta lock for Maple on that LeBlanc. Oh, and this cool is thrown. the first lol esports game that LeBlanc has been available in the picks, and it's instantly first pick, not through IWCA, nor all stuff from yesterday was it available at this point. So we finally get to see what it can do in a traditional Summoner's Rift matchup. Everybody's been talking about just how strong it is. And it's being piloted by one of the best mid laners in the world. Maple is, is incredible. This guy has been dominant for so long, and I'm very excited to see what he can do with it because this champion is so flexible. When you're playing against someone who is, who is a master of the new LeBlanc, honestly, it's hard to tell what's even going on at times. Yeah, <laughs> he can juke even the casters. I've yeah. seen that clone just go all over the place. But Maple now the pioneer of these new picks. And as we turn our attention after one strong pick, we look over in the other side, North America. They're going to take one pick they played yesterday in a very strong top laner when you look at the Poppy. That's a champion that's seen multiple bands come through as well. Yeah, and it the, the clock is obviously kind of having a bit of a malfunction here in Champ Select, but we will continue on as normal. Uh, you can just ignore that for now. But you know, the Poppy, and we're going to have Rain over back on Rengar. That's pretty exciting. We saw him go tank yesterday. I'm kind of hoping he goes uh, for the full damage yeah. build that we did see played later in the day. Yeah, I, I love seeing that assassin potential. And, you know, out of the jungle matchup, when you look at that, uh, if you go full damage, you've got to wonder, what is LMS going to pick? Ziv, will he go for the Nautilus up in the top lane to go against the Poppy? It's pretty much the matchup everybody is playing. Those two plus Maokai makes up the trifecta of top. Courage of the Colossus boys uh, <laughs> has made a lot of strong top laners relevant again. Waiting on the NMS to lock in their picks. They have around 10 seconds, not zero seconds, so don't panic. And it will be the Jin and Nautilus picked up. So you were just mentioning the Nautilus in the top lane, but also Jin going down there for BB. And I think it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Nautilus was already a champion that was honestly pretty good. We had seen it have a lot of success in pro play last year. It took a couple of nerfs, it fell out, but it was always kind of right on the cusp. And, and Courage of the Colossus is what has kind of put it over the edge here. Definitely does match up okay against the Poppy. I do think that Poppy kind of has the advantage in these matchups, though, both against the Nautilus and the Maokai, if, if only so slightly. We also yesterday saw the pivot to put Nautilus down in the bottom side, which was, yeah. uh, you know, perhaps not in everybody's mind the strongest of supports, but with uh, Redemption, with Courage of the Colossus, it actually makes up for a lot of the shortcomings. So maybe to play it in a protective capacity alongside the Jin, because you've got a Rengar that's going to be coming for your AD carry in every single team fight. And, and while it's probably too slow of a clear for a pro play, Nautilus jungle is actually solid in, in solo queue in that kind of situation as well. So this is a champion that can be played all across the map. We even have seen at times Nautilus mid you know, doing like banner rush and some silly things like that. But I definitely don't think we'll see that today. I'm expecting it to be top, could be flex support. Yeah. 
Yeah, if we did see a Nautilus mid lane, I could talk about that, but I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen for quite some time. Ryze will be picked up, though, as we were talking about at the start of Champion Select. You pick the LeBlanc, and of course, in return, we'll see Ryze on the other side. And then Karma will come down, most likely at the support now, as we have Ryze locked in. And the Ryze pick, it's one of the picks everybody said it will do well into LeBlanc, but you still always have the same problem. The early part of the game against LeBlanc, you've got to contain the snowball. Ryze can roam with his ultimate decently well and when you hit 11 it's actually okay and you can kind of follow in time and it's also something where if, if i'm playing against the leblanc you're not just worrying about the leblanc you're worrying about the jungler as well especially because rengar is not as strong in the early ganks as a graves right he's someone who wants to kind of power farm to six and <laughs> and Bjergsen is going to have to deal with jungle focus if you get chained and the graves arrives it can be all over and here's this lock-in from LMS to finish out their lineup. It's going to be Sona coming in there for the support here. And just look now at some of the crowd control aspects that the Sona and the Nautilus will have. Whether it's the Sona peeling for Jin as a Rengar tries to come in, or looking for the team fight setup from the Flash Crescendo, we don't see Sona very often, typically because of her laning squishiness and kind of the, the difficulty that you can have with that. But there's always a sustain game. There's always that ability. Yeah, and I find myself wishing that Aphromoo had saved his pick for last. He could be locking in the Blitzcrank right now. <laughs> but unfortunately, we're not going to get to see it. They have saved that last pick uh, for the AD carry. And, and Dublift, if you're locking in the Kaelin last, you're being try hard, and that's what it's going to be. Yeah, it is. It's going to be locked in for Double Lift. Double Lift wants to win this one. He's seen Albus pick up the Sona here, so we have the full lineups now, gentlemen. What are you thinking? It basically meant that he couldn't lock in any kind of Bane or anything with yeah, the, uh, the Karma down. as well. So Double Lift and Aphromoo are going for the, the pushing game with the Karma, with the Caitlyn. We saw this all the way through Worlds. So I quite like what NALCS have brought to the table here. The Rengar is going to be critical to allow them to get the Rise and the Caitlyn into their power later on in the game. But certainly uh, the LMS have a scary, scary amount of burst at the same time. Yeah, they definitely do. I, I think their team is much more about picks. I think that the LeBlanc, the Jin, aren't going to be as strong and straight up kind of 5v5 smashing against each other as that Rise and the Caitlyn are. These guys are kind of more straightforward, more strong in the team fight. Um, but there's so much potential to roam around and to catch people out. You have massive engage with the Nautilus, with this LeBlanc to be able to follow up and the Jin as well. So there's a lot of catch tools here, and I could see them moving around the map and, and kind of catching people out. Yeah, and in terms of how the LMS were playing yesterday and in terms of how they were getting those advantages, I feel like this is almost the perfect lineup for them. Mm. You have LeBlanc and Graves and you just walk into the mid lane, have fun Bjergs, and I'm just going <laughs> to insta-pop you from 100 to 0. Exactly. As soon as someone gets that chains on them, they've got a flash or they're getting taken out by uh, Casa and Maple. And, and Maple is going to go right back to the TP. He played TP Katarina yesterday. Uh, we saw him actually be pretty effective on that. Some TPs in the top lane where they were able to take out uh, multiple kills. You know, once the bot lane duo had rotated up there. And, and he's someone who is going to be looking to kind of obviously get through lane right here. He's not taking Ignite. He's not someone who's going to have to kill Bjergsen, especially with this summoner. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're heading on to Rift. But before we do so, vote at LOL, uh, at LOL Esport. Do the hashtags, hashtag win or hashtag win as we get into our first game of the day. It will be LMS versus NA taking it to the Rift. As we get onto the Rift, we can see for Graves, for Kasa, starting out with one of the control wards, going to try and prioritize a little bit of vision. Of course, Graves, his clear is pretty good. You knock back the camps, you can kind of stay sustained through the early game. So we'll see how that vision actually impacts the early game for Reyno, because that's where he struggled a little yesterday against Yankos. And if you can get those early control wards down, if you if you don't get spotted in the early game, you can sometimes have these wards that sit around for so, so long. But look at this. Fire sneaking around here behind Bebe. Oh, man, I feel like someone's going to die. Someone's have to burn some summoners in the second half. Remove right over, turn the corner. Albus is going to see him. He's taking the brunt of the damage. He'll have to flash away as BB returns fire. Oh, that makes this a very difficult laning phase now for Albus. He's going to kind of have to sit back. You cannot now play forward on the Sona where you're oh, looking. Interrupt. Oh. Yeah, that's actually really important there for Double if they delay the base even further. Afro may be able to do so oh, again. Oh, again. And Albus now, he can't really base if he does. He's leaving his AD carry out to dry. So this is just a brutal position for, for Albus and BB. Afro, he's going all the way around to try and find the next interrupt, but doesn't find it, unfortunately. But still, massive hit there. BB's going to have to stay in there. And he's just trying to do it. So he's going to be in lane for himself, uh, on his own at the moment. You can see Caitlyn and Karma are actually just sitting there trying to shove the wave already. Uh, just trying to get in position to make sure that they can take that early push. 
All right, taking a look at Keystones as well. You can see the double Colossus. And finally, we do have the rise with Courage of the Colossus as well, something we weren't seeing in IWCA. But we'd heard a lot about Kira from the CIS region, apparently in scrims and in solo queue had been playing a whole bunch of it. Because of just how sticky Rise is, you get you know the Rune Prison, you get everything, and you get such a big shield that he outputs so much damage despite you know lacking a damage uh, Keystone Master. And, and I mean, it's, it's not really even just the stickiness. It's about, he, he turns into a semi-tank. You're already going to be building the Seraph's Embrace. You have the shield from that. You have the Courage of the Colossus shield. You have the shield from his passive. Then you're building a Rod of Ages, which is also more tanky. So he becomes just ridiculously hard to kill. Yeah, Yo Dog, I heard you like shields. So I've got a <laughs> shield with my shield on my shield. And Bioxa will be doing massive damage regardless. I remember like, when we were seeing Ryze last week, he was hitting people for like 1.6k with Q combo. He was, but he's got to be careful in these early game trades because Maple, once he gets this stack up, you can see even the additional kind of bounces from the AoE that LeBlanc now has. He's doing so much damage. He's walking down Bjergsen, but that Man massive shield's going to keep him alive. Bjergsen out of mana here. Maple's going to make it back to his tower. Yeah, and Maple is, is trading into this big wave with the cannon minion shooting him, and that is massive in the early game. You can't actually just ignore the minion damage. Bjergsen was taking a, a lot of poke from Maple, but he had such a heavy wave advantage that it was evened out by those minions. Very close there. Kasa just clearing up his jungle here. Haven't seen too much interactions between the junglers, but he did go for the pot start, so very healthy, whereas Rainover went for the refillable potion. And after we're going to head back into the bottom lane here with double lift, you can see a very big CS advantage being built up after that level one play that they made. And BB trying to get all the CS he can, but constantly being zoned back. This is an oppressive lane from Team Fire. And this is the kind of lane now where Albus has to be incredibly careful stepping forward to try and do any damage. A lot of people will look at the Sona poke and say, okay, well, surely you can utilize that. But look, Albus is now caught by a trap. He has to take a very dangerous path out and a trade back on top of him. Apple does get caught, though. Yeah, going to run him down just a little as Albus puts some damage back on towards double lift. And he'll put the pressure down here in the bottom lane. So. Gonna be even it out for a little bit. Uh, lane we haven't spoken about just yet is top lane, probably for good reason. But see <laughs> the junglers kind of butt heads, and uh, Rain is go gonna shimmy back to his jungle. I love the new uh, Q. Where you just kind of pause a little bit. Yeah, the top lane, it's it's the CS is, is pretty even. Nothing too crazy is gonna happen unless there are roams up there, unless there are those Speaking janks and roams. <laughs> Pearson taking a little walk up the river. He's having a stroll. He's fine. And the scrying plant will spot him on his way back to the mid lane as well. Very strong plant indeed. Lots of uh, lots of vision coming out from that one. And Impact has his massive wave on the tower, so he's going to resolve this one and be pretty good with Ziv in the top lane. So back into the bottom lane where we actually have some trading going on. And Maple still in this mid lane against Jurgsen, so survived the all-in trade earlier. Again, though, this heavy CS advantage for Doublelift and Aphromoo, they've always got this push constantly up towards the tower, which gives so much freedom to reign over on the bottom side of the map that he can start looking to, you know, place vision control, uh, maybe end up clearing out this control ward that's in the river further up, as long as Bjergsen can cover for him and allow him just to get into that area. Yeah, and, and let's be honest, so much of it was about the level one. They essentially got cheesed out. Oh, yeah. The flash is forced. They delayed the base so long that, you know, Albus, not only is he at a disadvantage to start the lane, he's there late, but he then has to play safe until flashes up, which it is now. So you can hope that this is going to stabilize a little bit for them as they can play a little bit more aggressive and, and start to return some of that poke. With double lift and Aphromoo so far up the lane, though, they do have to be careful of the double teleport play. That's one of the things that we were hoping Europe were going to do yesterday against North America. But it was actually Reno from Bjergs that roamed it first. So we always have to watch out for that extra summoner, the ability to get across the map and make those global plays. Definitely do. But that's one of the advantages of keeping your opponents pushed in. They know there's never been a chance for them to get that ward behind them. And until they have moved up, on the map and actually place the good ward for that TP it can't happen. So they're trying to keep them locked in the base. They're trying to limit their options. But as a result of that really nice level one, double lift go, uh, gets to go back and get his perfect timing to instantly pick up that BF sword, then walk back to lane. Now he has that advantage, whereas BB will look for a different component. But because double lift recalled, that ward has now been placed. Aphromoo standing right on top of it. It likely won't uh, end up in a play unless Aphromoo goes way too far up in lane. Hang on a second. This aggression because he knows Reino is behind him, but here's the response of the TP. Most likely gonna be not cancel. Maple, he's going in onto Aphromoo. Gives him the quick close that, but he's gonna be backing away, and Reino is jumping all over the place. But nothing will happen in the end from that play. 
And both top laners now have expended their TPs. Maples is down, so you can go right back to being aggressive in the bot lane. Aphromoo's summoners are down, though. We we've get to see Karsa really get involved whatsoever. And that was Rainover's first alt. So he knows that he can kind of get pretty aggressive without much of a threat of a counter gank from Rainover. And now there's a, a bit of a tricky situation in the bottom lane again from BB and Albus. They haven't recalled yet. They're up against BF Sword, which means as soon as they do recall, now they're going to get shoved in if Doublelift and Aphromoo are still in that bottom lane. They're going to lose a lot of damage on that tower. And it becomes difficult for them to actually recover that as they just continually shoved in time and time again. Doublelift will reestablish the CS lead in this bottom lane. So one of our big storylines coming into the game was looking at the junglers and how they were going to impact at least the early game. And we may get to see that as Rainover <laughs> is heading up to the top lane. But Ziv is already making his way back. But Karsa and uh, obviously Rainover haven't found their way into these lanes just yet. Well, one of the things we just saw was the uh, the ult, the second part of the ult from Maple. He utilized the LeBlanc uh, Mimic up into the top side where it's got this massive range. You can just kind of have a LeBlanc clone appear and it fakes out your understanding of where LeBlanc is on the map. You can see that Rainover had to kind of think twice about ganking there. And that's just one of those mind games that we're going to see from the good LeBlanc players, always utilizing it at the important times because they were picking up blue. So it actually was this, you know, situation where LeBlanc's off the map. Where actually is she? She could actually be top. Separating the good LeBlanc players from the great. And Karsak, he's going to be taking away his red buff as well before he looks for anything else. Has that control ward as well, so maybe looking towards that uh, Dragon Vision. The first one is, of course, Infernal, so there will be a scuffle over that one for sure. Eight minutes into this game, no kills just yet between the LMS and NA. One of our questions has been answered, though. Is, is Rainover looking like he's going to go right back to the tank build here on Rengar? Joram's Fist into Lucidity Boots. Oh, I think that was almost stolen away, but this is the exact same build he did yesterday. Then he went into a Dead Man's, and I think we may just see that once more. Rainover was always more of a tank Rengar player, uh, even when he had played it in the past, so he's kind of going right back to that. And it's scary how much damage you still have as a tank. You find any squishy target, and it doesn't matter that you're building resistances. Rainover's looking for oh, Karsa, but Maple is here. <laughs> thinking maybe oh, right. he's he's out of the bus, but he'll be backing away. Maple's following after. Is that clone real? Will be chased down, walking the kitty cat. As he jumps back in, I'll force the flash from Maple. Bjergsen following up with the combo. Quick hit there. Aphromoo caught by himself. Karsa running him down with the tether. But this they could be they first blood. There as well. Maple's there to find him. And first blood as Aphromoo well caught in enemy lines. Yeah, Aphromoo just took a stroll through the jungle. Yeah. And he was like, oh, not my side. Sorry, guys. That's going to be first blood going over to Maple, who is exactly who you did not want to give that to. And the amount that the NALCS All-Stars had been pushing in the bottom lane, you can kind of understand the mentality of, oh, I've got the clear path through this jungle, right? It can't be warded properly, but look at the bottom side. There's control wards, there's wards all the way around, and Aphromoo was just walking up past, uh, kind of having to flash back in after the blast plant, because they realize Aphromoo's a free kill here. You know, double lift in the river, spotted on a ward, so there's no way Aphromoo has any help there. Actually uses the blast plant, to deny Aphromoo using it as an escape tool into the Dragon Pit. So, you know, it looked a little funky from Casa, but in the end, has the desired effect. Yeah, just cutting off another one of those escape routes. So, just being corralled into that jungle there. A bit unfortunate for North America, but I'll take that one for now. Yeah, I just think that was kind of pretty silly from Aphromoo. He knew that they were there, right? They just had a fight, a 2v2 fight in the jungle. He knows his AD is in the river. There's four guys there on the map, so. A bit silly. He's going to die. It's not the end of the world, obviously, but uh, as Bjergsen, you're now going up against that LeBlanc who does have the kill, and as the rest of the team, too, you're going to have to deal with this. And if LeBlanc gets rolling, it can be pretty terrifying. We saw what Maple could do on Katarina. It's, it's going to be that or even worse with a fed LeBlanc. Yeah, nice little play there from Maple as well. As Albus was clearing out that ward, he just sent his clone down there. Just a bit of backup as he walked back into lane, so Bjergsen didn't see him. And I really just like the fact that Maple's been looking towards these new uh, mid laners and the new changes and actually bringing it to the mid lane and he has all this stuff prepared for us. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the Assassin play. The, the one question and reservation that I have in, in my mind is the same with a lot of picks throughout history that people say, oh, they're very strong, they snowball very heavily. Is in scrims that works exceptionally well. The same with solo queue. But if you can't snowball effectively again and again and in a passive game, because stage games and important competitive games are a slower pace to 
quickly. Then we end up seeing these picks like Rise that can actually start containing the LeBlanc later in the game, and that's what we need to have our team. Oh, oh he's so nice. Nice. Steal away from Rainover. Oh, it's gonna follow him after. We've got Nautilus coming in from the top side. Nape on the follow-up. Crescendo! Everyone dance! Everyone die! Oh. And they get wiped! And Impact comes into the fight. This is not one that he wanted. Poppy got to, gonna get shot down from the skies. Five and zero to LMS. Four for zero in that fight, and the Dragon steal that insult to injury there as LMS just absolutely cleaned up Maple. But putting on a clinic here, was able to land so much damage. He hits them all with the W, puts up the passive, then he can bounce his Q and get a massive amount of DPS out there. And that is so big for the LMS, as they're going to get the first turret too. And a beautiful crescendo from Albus. Didn't even flash in for it, just lined up three, takes him out, and allows Maple to just knock them down on the last little bit of health. So this was the steal coming through, which, you know, it, it sticks at around 2,000 health for a while. Rainover goes back in, but Casa straight in for the steal. I mean, once again, Double is not really with the rest of his team as they get fully collapsed on. Nautilus comes in from behind. There is that beautiful ult, and you can see the passive going up. There's the bounce from Maple as he is able to clean up. Impact not even able to get out. Does waste his flash and is as TP yeah. there as, as he goes down. And that raises an interesting question. You were talking about Double Lift being on the bottom side of the map. Well, we saw him split pushing a whole lot yesterday on Twitch, and it took him a long time to start ending the game where they were looking to carry with the Twitch. If that kind of happens again, they don't have the success between Rainover and Bjergsen in this game that they did to rely on in yesterday's game against EU. Well, and they don't even have a lead in the bot lane, right? He's actually down a couple CS, not that that's too consequential, but the kills plus that means that it is starting to be a bit of a, a deficit down there. First tower has already gone down, and that does give you such a large infusion of gold, specifically because you have three of those kills on the LeBlanc, that it's going to be terrifying. This guy already has his first item completed, plus his Sorks, and he can start popping people. It's absolutely massive. He's going to give an attempt onto Bjergsen. Pops oh, double jump in that big shield coming out. Keeps him alive, of course. Ooh. Courage of the Colossus also coming in there. That was like half his health bar. It's just like, <laughs> what, is this Tam Kench in the mid lane? I, yeah, I mean, he hits the chain. That's two summoners gone. And because he's that strong, you have to respect it. If Bjergsen doesn't flash there, he's just dead. Rainover following on to Kasa, but it's two versus three right now. He'd be quite big himself, comes in with the ace in the hole, but Rainover gonna jump right into the bowler, and he's gonna hit the dust. Bjergsen and Aphromoo trying to find the portal out of it. Oh, 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 oh. Albus, what a god! The double ultimate once again, securing the kills for LMS. Oh man, Albus, his ultimates have been so, so good. Double lift. Kasa may be picked up, it's not quite enough. Double lift committing Maple with that shutdown. Nine and zero, putting on a clinic. Yeah, these guys are just outclassing the North American LCS in this game. LMS is looking on point. Five kills now for the LeBlanc. If he wasn't already scary, he's going to be a terror. And, and once again, what are they even doing taking this fight? Your mid laner is back. He already just blew both his summoners. They're taking a 2v3 here, where their AD carry is not in position. And this is just not putting a lot of thought into the fight. Yeah, if Rainover, maybe if he's going full damage, is thinking I can get one of them and come straight back out of the fight. But you've got the tank. Oh, Albus, what a beautiful ult for a second time. We were kind of looking at the Sona pick and talking about where its strengths and weaknesses were going to be. Well, we found That's what Sona always is going to do if she can land that, the flash into the crescendo. And then double lift. Pushed up in lane, no help around him. At that point, he was trying to get out already, but they were closing the gap way too quickly. Yeah, it looked like Double may be able to reclaim one kill as the flying cast who went through one of his traps, <laughs> but it wasn't quite enough damage. And after all of that, not even a single kill on the board. This could get to the point where NA gets perfect games. We're on track for it. I think we're 0-9, <laughs> we're entering world status here. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, can't, we gotta oh, get one on the board. <laughs> Oh, I don't want to uh, feel like a defender. We are a little early, perhaps, for perfect game discussion. Yeah, I don't know. It's we're a little way five zero four Maple yeah. LeBlanc in the mid lane. We're, we're only at one tower. Like I, I appreciate Looks that. Stress. the You need to get something there. from this. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are pretty early in the game. It's certainly far from over, but it is a very big lead and a heavy advantage going the way of the LMSs. Uh, they certainly have the ball in their court. These guys are looking really, really good, and it's going to be up to, uh, to the North American team to actually kind of make some plays here and yep. try to get something going. And you know where I feel like it's going to end up coming from? 
after Impact gets a second item, he has been a playmaker just time and time again. And I want to see him actually have some sense of presence in this game because right now, Ziv and Impact have almost done nothing and ooh, double it, just dodges away. Oh, no, ulti from Rain over. Never wants to come in. He's following onto Albus. No, he wants out. He wants out because oh, of the people here. coming in. Curtain Call will be lining up the shot on Maple. Shut down. Goodbye, perfect game. And Rain over. He doesn't need that bowler. Bjergsen following onto Carter, looking for BB as well. And now he wants to get away. The DB's coming Carter. in. Coming in with the Qs. He's shut down by BB. Rain over. Nice flash out of the way. But he's followed up to Isim. No running away from the Northless. Double kill for BB. Now Impact looking to be the hero that NA needs. Courage of the Colossus keeping him alive. Ziv, he's kind of caught in no man's land right now, and BB trying to save him, but he's just so damn tanky. Double lift can't cut through that Nautilus. He's going to be slammed against the wall by Impact. Another shield. Albus and BB, the flash over the wall. Double lift trying to get out. Nice verdict. We'll keep them alive, but Impact tugged in by Ziv, and BB happy to sweep up the mess here. Good Carter time. coming in from the side. The return kill. Shut down. Impact is going up, but it may not be enough. Somehow he's still alive. Ziv will be having to run away now. There's no Iceborne, so he's not going to get slowed at least, but that was a very sloppy play. And they need to be aware that LeBlanc is back on the map, and Maple is making his way over here. If Poppy does get caught out, he will go down, but should be okay for now. But I have to say, Impact got a lot of work done when he TP'd, but where was that TP earlier? Yeah. That was ridiculously late. Not one, but two members from the LMS completed their teleport before he even think, started thinking about it. Exactly, and when we look at the replay, we can see why the initial TP was late. And what, But then the question is, why not after Ziv shows up? Because look yeah. at the top side. They're actually close enough against each other that they would be able to block the first TP and then the second, so they don't want to use it yet. Raynover tries to go in. Here comes Maple, getting instantly you know, crowd controlled and taken out. That's one of the weaknesses, is if you come directly into the fight alone, you will get picked up. Now Ziv has dropped back in TPs. Impact should be TPing immediately into this fight. Only now was a ward placed though, so he has to TP to the tower. It's the fact that there's nothing to come to. The minions weren't there, there was no ward. So from there, he gets work done, but it's just a little too late. Yeah, it certainly was very late, and Ziv honestly had, had left lane like 10 to 15 seconds even before he TP'd. So Impact could have made something happen. Uh, they do on the later end of this get some work done. It was very well played by double lift and Impact in that kind of two versus the world. And it has been some kills finally going over to them, so they are shutting a little bit of the snowballing down. Now, but at the end of the day, it's still almost a 6,000 gold advantage. I'm rounding up from 5.4. It's around 5,000 gold We'll give you this one. To LMS. That's oh, oh, he's a caught him again. getting caught out. The long range damage, and it doesn't matter that you have that shield. BB is going to find you. Again, Albus finds them, takes out Bjergsen. Now they're onto the mid tower. This is going horribly wrong for North America. Bjergsen's not even able to try and make plays aggressively with this ult, but here goes Rain over. What are you going? Four? Good. He kind of by himself. He's got double limbs and Afro Mare to help him out. Afro Mare? He's turned into a different animal, but the Rift House has gone back to the void. 13 to 2, 20 minutes into the game. And had a mess with those two dragons as well. At least Maple going to be picking up this blue buff. Actually, going to be stealing this one away. It's definitely not their side of the jungle, but I guess it is now. Yeah, then I mean they've taken both dragons. They're taking away the buffs. They're pushing up vision, taking down the inner tier two. There, this is this is textbook. This is really good League of Legends, and they're honestly looking like a very coordinated team. It doesn't look like a fun, you know, go lucky, uh, have fun. Let's be all star. <laughs> yeah. Hey, LMS, they're taking it very very seriously. And the next step of this that they've started to do already is remove the NALCS vision because that is when LeBlanc is at her most deadly. She just sits around a corner and waiting for you in a bush and instantly you get popped. You get taken out and suddenly you start losing towers, objectives, further map control. So there are still areas you can see the LMS have decent vision control on the bottom side, but there's a couple of wards still spattered around there that if they can get rid of, they can start really punishing Bjergsen for walking through the jungle like they just did. All right, I guess at this point in the game, we need to start looking at those shining lights for NA now. We've got that one kill to double lift. He's sitting on the Hurricane going into the Infinity Edge. Hasn't got that second item yet, but going to interrupt that point as Impact is charging up. The Copter does not land on Takasa. He was blinded. Maple going to come round the corner. Rain over's there to try and get the assist down. Yeah, Should jump on Takasa, but got the long range support from BB. Ooh. Doesn't quite land onto the Poppy. Good body block there from Rainover. Do we have more support coming in from NA? Yes, we do. But so is Albus. 
And this is super risky for them to try to defend. It's a, it's a 4v2 right now. Afro is coming up, but even then, the turret's gonna go down and with Impact chunked out, and I cannot stay around. I'm gonna say that's not a good recall location for Impact there, so he's gonna wander back to his tower. And the other thing here is this is too far for Bjergsen with his ultimate. This is the other side of the map completely, whereas Zim has the teleport. If he drops back in the pocket behind the turret again, he can look to TP play. Going down too. Bjergsen has to recall if he wants to get here, but they're just choosing to fight. So as you said, this turret is going down because impact previously was so low. He actually just had to TP back to the top lane just to de uh, defend against that push. Man, that feel when the top lane Nautilus is dueling your your middle laner, your Bjergsen, team solo mid mid laner, zero four one currently, and he just cannot get through that shield. He's just too tanky. Yeah, I mean Bjergsen is, is zero four. He's not ahead of this guy, right? He's behind, and and Ziv has the early spirit visage. He has the Merc treads, and he has Curse of the Colossus. Yeah. So <laughs> it's gonna, it's going to be really tough to actually punch through the Nautilus at all until a much later stage for Bjergsen. He's going to need a Void Staff. He's going to need some more completed items, but that's a long ways off. And really, NA is kind of putting their eggs in the Bjergsen basket. They're saying, go to the side lane, get some levels, get the farm. We trust you to carry later in team fights. The same can be said for double lifts items as well. When you, when you look at this, he's only just got the Infinity Edge as he recalled then. So he is still a long ways off being able to shred through the Nautilus, through the Graves, because Nautilus is likely to get more armor now as his next item. So there's a lot of tricky spots that NA just have to try and not fight if they can. Yeah, I mean, itemization becomes very difficult when there are these kind of super tanks like the Nautilus that you have to deal with, plus an assassin who kind of says, you need to build a Hex Drinker, you need to build some MR, or I'm gonna one-shot you. And it's it's kind of, which do you go for? And oftentimes, the premier AD carries will say, you know what, I'm gonna position perfectly, I don't need the MR, I'm gonna go for the damage. So looping this one back to Champion Slex, we were looking at LMS and saying, hey look, they have a very much a pick-based composition. And I think they've executed on that very well, considering how the game's gone so far. They've leveraged that into those objectives, but where's their break point for NA? Where do they get strong to the point where they can start challenging M uh, LMS in those 5v5s? I really think it is completing three, four items. These kind of points for Caitlyn, when you know she has rapid fire on top of this, you can really start putting out a ton of damage. And and Bjergsen completing his Seraphs and getting an Abyssal Avoid, they need to complete more items, and that means they need to delay. So yep. it's going to be up to LMS to force fights around objectives, look to make NA fight you now around the bear and around dragons where they don't have vision, and close out the game that way. The problem is the NA All-Stars have picked fights earlier on in the game, and the point that it leads us to is the fact that Maple has done twice as much damage as any member of the NA LCS All-Stars in this game so far. That's what you get when you fight a LeBlanc this early early in the game and after a couple of kills, a couple of items, suddenly you're wondering why is this LeBlanc doing so well? It's because your Rainovers decided to fight time and time and, again. And look at the flank they're setting up here. They're looking for a fight here. Oh no, Aphromoo, the depth charge is locked on him. He's not going to allow that to hit any more of his teammates, but the TP is now coming in from Maple, so he'll join the fight. Rainovers leading the charge, oh, but he's now being revealed. And the rest of ICE are grouped together, so I don't think Pyre really want this fight considering the state the Rainbow is in. Now, if Maple can't. Ooh, Casa! Well, nice pick on Sakasa. That will start off the fight. Impact so well done there. The flash stun. Rogue charge against the wall, pins Karsa, they take him out, and that is a big play from the top laner. And that's the difficulty for this composition that ICE are running, though, is if they go in head first. But this is going to be This is four versus five. This could look very good for the NA lineup. Rainover, he's kind of dancing back and forth. Redemption came down as well. <laughs> I would like to point out that everyone was hitting Ziv in that fight. <laughs> uh, we did about 2% HP. Good job, guys. And he's regen all of that back up with Albus there behind him as well. That will secure Team Fire the Dragon. Reyna was going to jump to the bus, give himself the push there. But impact oh, for the crescendo onto four players. Ziv's going to be chased down by Rainover, jumping back in one after another. Ziv, he's taking the brunt of the damage from Team Fire. He'll tank that after, but Bjergsen wants in. He's going to teleport four people into the back line. That will find BB. And now Ziv in enemy territory. He's going to be run down. And it's just a matter of impact slamming him against the wall and getting Rainover in there for the kill. Impact is making the stun look like it's just a point and click ability. Like, there's no <laughs> setup involved in this thing. He seems to be able to get people on command. And Bjergsen, though, oh, oh, in. Oh, my God. God. But didn't get a chance to get away. But Rainover, he will avenge his mid laner. And Maple is going to have to jump away with that distortion. Alba's there to back him up. I swear there used to be a rise on my screen. I don't <laughs> know where he went. Someone's going to have to fill me in. 
We have to see SI in the crime scene. <laughs> uh, there wasn't the block running away. Oh, Elvis! Point and click ability indeed. Impact, I don't know how he does it. That was fantastic CC chain. Rain over lands the empowered bola. Double it falls it up with a trap, and then Impact slams him into the wall. Beautifully done. This was a messy sequence that eventually goes heavily in favor of the NALCS All-Stars. Let's take a look at how it's starting, because the key difference here is the fact that Maple cannot find a way into this team fight. He cannot get onto a squishy target. This is the second phase that, despite a great crescendo, again, look at it, the damage dealers are not able to stand and fight. Maple cannot get in. Bebe can't find the space because of how low he is, and ends up with four members right around him as Bjergsen ends up, ends up taking him out. Before this, Maple was in a situation where he was looking to go head in, and if he goes just in through the front door, he's going to get uh, room prison, just like he did in the bottom side and get taken out. So he's been a lot more careful with his engages now that he's died once. And let's be honest, they had no jungler. It was a 4v5 the right. whole time, right? If Karsa is, is there in that fight, we saw how Rain, how Rain Over was exceptionally low. We saw how Impact got very low. They're just dead. So it was a lot of that on the back of the pick that Impact created, and he has been a big time player for North America to kind of get them back into the game. And that pick all stemmed from the NALCS All-Stars basically playing the LMS's bluff, knowing that they can't engage head on. They forced them out of the mid lane, around the corner, and they were saying, we'll get a turret or anybody that tries to come for us. So it was a good call for NALCS to just go straight down mid, knowing LMS couldn't quite get the positioning on the team that fight that they needed. I mean, a real heads up play, you know, getting that pick onto the pick team themselves. Casa, one clearing out the uh, the Baron wards. Almost it is twice as clear. <laughs> twice as clear. The double control wards going down. Um, it's always scary clearing out the Baron ward as uh, as Graves. Not, not sure if one of those pellets is going to anchor the Baron. Don't want to be taking too much damage. But impact now in the bottom lane. I don't think there's too much to say about this fight, uh, other than that they are hitting each other, well, not really doing any damage. They're yeah. both going to get a shield up at exactly the moment that the other's shield is up. So it's just going to always continually be trading, but it's like fighting. It's kind of losing out. Yeah, I mean, Z Ziv is, is kind of winning. But get him, Ziv. I, I don't think it's going to be enough to actually oh, kill yeah, him. What a hook. So it, it just becomes about the pressure that he gets in lane. So he wins that skirmish, now he gets lane advantage. He can get the push going. Impact has to base. So that is what he got himself there. I don't think he was uh, under any illusions. Like, oh, I'm going to get him, guys. I'm going to get him. You're not going to get him. But you <laughs> might get the minion wave. He wants him. Uh, Impact like just wants to ult it away by the looks of it. Don't always get what we want, boss. No, we don't. We do not indeed. But uh, I'm, I'm happy to beat LMS Pulse for this game. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wanted TSM to win Worlds. Uh, how, did that, how did that go for me? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah, hello. He's in this one we Oh, the damage jump for Maple, but there's Courage of the Colossus. There's the shield on his shield, but it's not enough to keep him alive. Caso with the assist. Well, we learned the answer to the question, can Bjergsen take that fight with three items? Still no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> despite still having some MR and a fair amount of tanky stats, so... Yeah, uh, I, th I think he needs more items than yep. you can get to win a 1v2, but, uh, <laughs> but still. He's got the inverted score line there for Maple, so... Yeah. Rest in peace. He'll get there. He just needs those four items, Azale. That's all he needs. That's true. That 50 minute mark, the palace fight. That's what we're looking for. We're scaling. We're scaling. We're scaling, <laughs> scaling guys. boys. We've got the late game. Yeah. The classic solo queue. Uh, keep the morale up. <laughs> Don't worry. We can make this work. 16 to 7, though. 30 minutes into this game with a 7,000 gold lead to the LMS. But yeah. Baron is not yet down. However, speaking of Baron, LMS is looking for it. And, and this is really what they need to get to crack this game open because the gold lead oh. has stagnated. Oh, oh double oh, lift. Bad. Defeated by Maple. He goes right over. going to jump in. He does have the shield. Nice cleanse. Also of the ultimate there from Albus. Gonna be knocked up by the death charge, but Maple, he's causing havoc in the back lines. Baby, taking out Aframu. Jumping over the wall, Whoa. it's gonna be secure by Carter. Rain over looking for the hero play, but not today. You are not the protagonist of this story. Look at Maple's damage when he finds somebody on their own. Doublelift doesn't know what's hitting him, and just suddenly LeBlanc takes him out, and it opens up the easy, clean Baron play for the LMS. And this, at this point, should be enough to close this game and start getting the inhibitors down. This is the kind of lead that they really have been looking to open up. Yeah, I mean, three members dead. There's no contesting this one. And the question is, does LMS just march it down and, and try to actually close it out, but I don't think they will. They're going to base, they're going to spend their gold up, and this is definitely the safe, the smart play from them because they have the pressure in the mid lane now. They can look to the side lanes and try to really play it safe. So let's take a look because we didn't catch this actually the first time. Double lift on a ward. 
easy combo for Maple to take out. And that was the start of this fight that eventually leads to Baron. Rainover, a little fortunate because he gets that can't be disabled through the crescendo, yeah. but still ends up, you know, losing out on this fight for the NALC. And, and this, this was pretty slick, though, by Rainover. Not Ooh. only to stay alive, but to get around. He jumps in onto Bebe, attempts the steal. Had he got it, that would have been pretty sick, but not going to work out for him. And it. Not much has been working out for any in this game. Down 10k, and he's gonna lose another Infernal. Even at the point, it's worth just trying to go. <laughs> it <laughs> totally is, yeah. Try and be the hero, try and turn your fortune around. We've seen it happen time and time again, but at the end of that fight, both Maple and Bebe were almost set on 3,000 gold each. <laughs> so that's why they needed to go back. They needed to go and make sure they had just enough to be able to close this game out because they have just been on fire this entire game. So I just heard that Maple has done 25k damage, and NA have done a total of 50k damage. He's done 50% of the entire <laughs> NA you know, team's Us here in North America, we're about teamwork, so you got to add it all it's, together. It's pretty across. All right. It's camaraderie, okay. you know. He was Ale. We're doing fine, guys. I mean, you're not, but... <laughs> <laughs> 19 to 7, and Baron buffs LMS, who are pushing into the bottom lane, but I appreciate the optimism. Yeah, good hustle, right? Good hustle. Well, well, good hustle. They're, they're doing their best, and they are trying to defend this bot lane turret, and it's just about stalling at this point. Stall, stall, stall. LMS want to close it out with this monumental gold lead, with the Baron buff, with everything that they have in their favor right now, because the reality is, yes, they're crushing North America right now, but if you give it another 10 minutes, if you let these guys continue to pick up items, the gold lead starts to matter less and less and less, but it's going to be a huge task to stay alive. As the towers are just falling left, right, yeah. and center, you can see Maple going on Bukes on the top side of the map as well, and pushing up to the turret, so... I mean, there's just so much in the pressure game here for the LMS shoving constantly in with the mid lane having super minions streaming in. I don't think we're going to get to that 10 minute point without a horribly botched fight by the LMS. If they try one of the ones where they're looking to go in through the front door where they tried in the mid lane, then perhaps NALCS have an opportunity to hang on. The Baron buff has almost expired though, so once that goes down, it's going to be a big boon to the North American team. We'll see if they can make it to that point. They are just trying to weather the storm now. Delaying tactics from NA, double lift with the, uh, the wonky wall of traps. Um, <laughs> I always love the nice, clean line of traps. I always get triggered by the, the wonky wall. But it's, it's enough, though, because they're all short-range champions, pretty much, on the LMS squad, so they can't actually step close enough to really deal damage. And as you said, now that the Baron buff is close to expiring, suddenly this uh, wonky wall is fairly oh, they're looking for the dive. Dive. He's just going to crash right through it. Here comes the engage under the tower of Akasa. He's in a little dip deep. That's a nice exhaust into Maple, keeping them alive. And Impact oh, going to stay alive as well. Maple coming in there, looking for the assassinate. No one's down just yet. Everyone's still alive here for NA, and they actually do hold on. A lot of summoners uh, blown there by the LMS team. Their carries are without their flash, so... And they hold on. Yeah, they hold on because beautiful ultimate from Impact to, to knock so much of the front line out. And Maple, his eyes were on going in. He wanted to be in that fight, in on the back line, but he was the only one. He was surrounded, so couldn't get the majority of his damage down. Look at where double, uh, look at where Bjergsen positions himself. Flashes up on the top side, away from Maple, so that he doesn't get taken out. Impact hits out the Northless and the Sona and Castor. And look, Maple tries to go in. Low health targets, but he cannot capitalize because he was so low in the middle of everybody else. Cannot pick anybody up. And part of that is the change for LeBlanc. You have to actually stay in long enough to proc your passive to really kind of pop people. Old LeBlanc, you just go in, you QR, someone's dead there. You cannot do that with LeBlanc. You need to stay in long enough for your chain to proc or to get the second spell off. He couldn't do it this time. Not able to complete one of those kills. What an ultimate from Impact. That Keeper's Verdict literally knocking three players away. I don't even think I've seen a triple poppy ultimate before in that scenario. Impact has, has really had the team on his back this game. Oh, yeah. He, he is doing so well, and <laughs> he does not want to lose. This game, this tournament, I mean, Impact yesterday as well was going deep. But Impact is really that 1v1 was pretty tournament. hyped too. It was, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so if Impact can make it work, I mean, he's looking at his team right now, 1-4, 1-6, 0-6, and it's just like, look, guys, but don't worry, I've got this. When, you know, watching the NALCS over the last year, it's kind of what we've come to expect, though, right? Is It's Impact. He's showing up consistently when they needed to. 
And this is exactly what the NA LCS All-Stars need, is this defensive play off the Impact Ultimates, denies the fights and stops the snowball. We're at 1 minute 15 until Baron. We know LMS are going to have to go for it to be able to push in for the win. If this time Doublelift doesn't step over a ward and get assassinated, they should be in a lot better spot. Yeah, and honestly, we talked about items earlier, right? A lot of these items are now coming in. Doublelift has some lifesteal and his magic resist from the Mercurial. We see the Void Staff completed for Bjergsen. The Armor Pen's coming in for a double lift. These are the key items that they need to start getting to become relevant in these fights. And Maple, he's huge, but he's capped out. He doesn't get stronger from this point, whereas Bjergsen still has room to grow, still has another item slot to complete. You know, Azale, you're the type of person I want on my team in solo queue. Forever the optimist. <laughs> Guys, they've hit their power spikes. We've got this. We still have time to scale. Guys, we're level 11. They're 18, but they can't get higher. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we can only get stronger. We can't lose by more. Greenover, just don't face check a brush. Okay, it's fine. He shimmied on out. Now, I want to see one once Aphromoo actually has the locket completed, just that actual, the increase in effective health that the NALCS team are going to have. Because with all of the shields, with all of the resistances they have, if they get that boost of a shield on top of it already, Maple, again, is going to struggle to catch anyone out. And that's where Bjergsen kind of takes over in the mid lane game. Oh, right over. Got to be careful that uh, he doesn't get caught out by Albus and the rest of the LMS. And this this gets really dicey because Maple's already in the base. He's pushing the inhibitor. This is going to be dead no matter what. But what does NA do? Because the LMS are going to push on multiple sides. But for a moment there, you don't know whether it's the real LeBlanc. Oh. You have to second guess yourself. So Maple's going to try and get himself out. They couldn't commit instantly. Oh, he used the TP. TP's out. At least, at least he got the he had to TP there for for the NAT. But that was really smart from Maple. I love that he's able to do that. And with how much AP he has, he actually punched through that and hit super quick. So now the pressure is back in that lane. Top wave will always be pushing. The Baron is on the field. The Elder Dragon is on the field. And LMS has three dragons to one. So they have all the pressure here. And it's going to have to be Impact sitting up in that lane trying to clear these waves out. And they're going to start up the Baron. They want to get his TP right now. Well, they are five men strong. Maple, he's sitting in the wings looking for a Can't pick. Give it up. Rainover, he's going to try and find a steal. He'll jump late. in. He's going towards the Baron. Can he find it? No. It's secured by Casa. Impact of Rainover trying to scurry up this fight. Double it being chased down. And Ziv will find him with the assistance from Casa. Rainover getting blasted down. That's the double kill. Impact. Bjergsen, it's now damage control for the NA lineup, but it's not going to happen. LMS are chasing them down. They're scattering the roaches. And Impact trying desperately to run for Maple, but that's the shutdown. The five, the five for zero. 24 to seven. The Baron over to LMS. A clean fight for the LMS. This time they caught double lift in the fight. There was no damage to be done. And despite Bjergsen hanging on, he was on his own. Even Impact was low health and backing away. What a performance from the LMS All-Stars. Yeah, Double if gets caught in that fight. He gets taken out and Maple, Karsa, Ziv kind of combining to take down the AD carry means that is that LMS is going to take down North America. An unbelievable win from LMS. A surgical removal of NA from the game. I really like what the LMS All-Stars are bringing to the table. Karsa and Maple working very effectively together. And we talked about how we were expecting the NALCS to do the same kind of thing. But this time, you look at the, the synergy between Rainover and Bjergsen. Didn't